Now that we've set up this app.js file, I'm going to modify it to include an HTTP client that can interact with our JSON API. Again, we're going to do this without any kind of other libraries, without jQuery or underscore or anything like that. We're just going to craft the raw XML HTTP requests ourselves. So I'm going to get rid of this console and then just add a note here that this is the container for the front end application. Now, before we move any further into actually writing the functions, I'm going to have a config object. On the client side, it will be important to be able to administer some kind of configuration that holds environment specific variables or just state dependent variables such as the session token. All we know for sure that we need right now is the session token. So I'm going to call the config variable app.config and it's just going to have one key on it for now called session token, which defaults to false. So client side, our logic is going to know if you have logged in, if you have gotten a session token, it's going to live here. We're also later on going to persist it further to local storage as opposed to disk. We can't persist to disk on the client side, but we're going to persist it to local storage so that the session token can survive the browser being refreshed. Now we're actually going to write the Ajax client for the RESTful API. The client is going to have a few functions, and so it's going to be a container itself. App.client is just an empty object. Now we're actually going to write app.client.request, which is going to be the interface for making API calls. App.client.request is going to be a function that takes in everything that the user needs to specify in order to make the API call. They need to be able to specify the headers they want to send the path they want to make the request to. We don't need domain or anything like that because this is always happening on localhost to the same application. They need to specify the method, post, get, put, or delete. The query string object, rather than writing it in the path, they can just provide key value pairs of the query string parameters that should be sent. The payload that they want to send, if any, and then a callback. Now we have to do the tedious task of actually setting defaults for all of these things. So the headers should be an object. And it should not equal null. If it passes those tests, we'll use it. Otherwise, we will default it to an empty object. Path should be a string. If it is, we'll use it. Otherwise, we will default it to slash, to nothing at all. Method should also be a string. And it should be specified as capital post, get, put, or delete. Client side, the XML HTTP request that we're going to create will require capital methods. The query string object needs to be an object and not equal to null. And so we are going to steal the validation that we just did on headers. That is the same requirements for payload. So I'm going to copy that again so that payload has the same validation. Lastly, callback needs to equal a function. Or we'll default it to false. 
we normally don't do this kind of sanity checking on the callback parameter. The reason we're doing it here is we want to allow users to make app.client.request calls with or without a callback. And so we're just defaulting it to false so that we can check it later and say, if there is a callback, call back. But if there's not a callback, don't bother trying to call back because there's no function there. Now, since we're actually crafting this as a full URL, we want to add the query string parameters to the path before we send it off. Even though we allowed the users to specify the query string object as keys and values, when we send it, we need to add it to the path. So for each query string parameter sent, add it to the path. So, so far, the request URL equals path plus question mark. And the question mark is there so that we can add on the parameters, just one after another. We're going to count how many parameters we have, and then we're going to loop through them. I'm going to say for var query key in the query string object, perform this loop. First, we have to make sure that it's a real key. So if the query string object has own property, query key, then we'll continue. We'll bump the counter up. And then if at least one query string parameter has already been added, prepend new ones with an ampersand. So in other words, if the query string already has foo equals bar, then before we add fizz equals buzz, we have to add the ampersand. So we want to say if the counter, this is the reason we're making the counting at all, if the counter is greater than one, now remember it was just incremented here, so it'll already be one even for the first parameter. So if it's greater than one, then we want to say that the request URL should have ampersand added to it. And now we can actually add the key value. Request URL equals query key equals query string object query key. Now that we've gone through that for loop and the path has all the keys and values that we needed to have, we can form the HTTP request as a JSON type. So we want to say that var xhr equals new XML HTTP request. And then we want to open it. So xhr.open and pass it the method, the request URL, the full URL that we just created, and true. Now we want to set the headers. So xhr set request header. But the only one we're concerned with at this moment is that content type should equal application slash JSON. Now for each additional header sent in the actual headers object that the user might have sent, now we need to add it to the request one by one. So we're gonna say that for var header key in headers, Let's loop through if headers has own property header key, xhr set request header, header key, and then the value, which is headers, header key. Now, if there is a current session token, in other words, if there's a session token up here, we need to add that as a header as well. So we want to say if app.config.session token, 
then add that as a header as well. The header would be called token, and the value is app.config.sessiontoken.id. Because if the session token was added there, it would be an object that would have a key called ID. Now we need to start preparing for the request to come back. So we're going to say when the request comes back, handle the response. So XHR on ready state change is a function. And we want to say if XHR ready state equals XML HTTP request dot capital done, that means the request is done. And this syntax is just very specific to the way the XML HTTP request functions expose themselves in browsers. We want to get the status code that came back from the API. So the status code equals xhr.status. And the response that they sent back, the response returned equals xhr.response text. Now this is where we want to call back if the user provided a callback in the first place. So callback if requested. In some cases, we might want to send off an HTTP request and we don't care about the callback. We don't care about getting a response, we just want to send it off. But in some cases, we do want the callback, so we will provide one. So we want to say if callback. Then we want to try and catch parsing the JSON response. Because JSON parse will throw an error if the response that it got back from the server wasn't valid JSON. So we're gonna catch the error and within the try, we're going to say that var parsed response equals json.parse the response returned. And then call back the status code and the parsed response to whoever called it. Otherwise, we'll just call back status code and false. Now, we have prepared for what happens when the request comes back, but we actually haven't sent off the request yet. So now we want to send the payload as JSON. And we do that by saying that the var payload string equals JSON stringify payload. And now we want to say xhr.send the payload string. I'm going to start this app back up just so we can load this page and this app.js in a browser again and then use the console to play around with making client requests. So I'm going to reload this page. Then I should be able to open up the console and directly access this object, app.client.request, in order to make requests. So I want to say app client.request and for illustrative purposes I'm just going to hit the ping service for now. So I don't need headers, I can leave that undefined, but I do want to send a path and that path is going to be ping. The method is going to be get, the query string object is going to be undefined, payload undefined, but I do want a callback. Status code and the payload returned. When it calls back, I just want to log out what happened. Status code, payload. All right, so that just sent off and we can see that what came back was 200 and an empty object. I want to send off that same request again, but this time I'm going to send it to a different route. Let's send it to the user's route. We got a 404 because the user's route doesn't exist anymore. It actually exists as API slash users. So we're gonna send that off and we got a 400 that we're missing a required field. 
So we're seeing the same responses coming back from our API that we used to see when we would make the requests using Postman. This client request function that we just built is the most important thing inside of app.js. And it's really the only client side logic that I think it's worth going into detail on in this course. The rest of the functions that will be added to this file will simply be gathering up form inputs and sending it to our API or redirecting a logged out user to the you've been logged out page, et cetera, et cetera. And so in the following lectures, I'm not going to go into detail about the way that the app.js file is changing. I'm simply just going to note that we are adding things to the app.js file and I'll paste things in there. If you want to see the code in more detail or go over it in detail, all the code lecture by lecture is again available on the GitHub, separated out by lecture so you can see how the code changed from lecture to lecture. So without further ado, we can kill this app and move on to the next lecture.